Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on shipwrecks and salvage, the in, so the option in HSC chemistry. And so far in this series we've looked at alloys, um, shipbuilding materials, and also steel. So we've looked at why we pick particular metals and why certain alloys of steel are used in certain applications. Now we're going to look at, well, the main cause of any sort of damage to ships and other um, metal objects is corrosion. And so we're going to look at the mechanism of rusting. Okay? So how does this rust actually form? And is there a way to sort of hinder it? Okay? So oxygen and water are required for iron to rust. So steel, iron, any sort of iron compound will rust. Um, or any iron alloy will rust, unless it's, of course, something like stainless steel. So rust is essentially hydrated iron oxide. So rust is essentially you've got water and iron oxide, and they've sort of mixed together, and so you get hydrated iron oxide. So its formula is Fe2O3 um, with some sort of X amount of water, um, where X is either 1 or 2, depending on the chemical conditions. So the reactions that happen during rust, so the actual mechanism, is that iron solid, so the iron atoms, uh, oxidize to form iron, to form Fe ions and 2E minus. So I always have trouble because it's iron ions, so we'll just call it Fe from now on. So Fe ions um, and two electrons. Now what happens is the reduction, the reduction reaction is actually a reduction of oxygen that's been dissolved in the water. So the oxygen atom, uh, oxygen molecule, sorry, and two water molecules uh, plus four electrons give you four OH minus ions. Okay. So it absorbs electrons and gives you four OH minus. So the reactions. Uh, so then what happens is the Fe ions react with the hydroxide ions to give you uh, iron hydroxide, which is insoluble. And then that iron hydroxide reacts with oxygen to give you the hydrated iron oxide that we were mentioning before, which is also insoluble. So as you kind of work your way across, you can see the different processes. So here's the iron hydroxide, and then you've got the actual rust, okay? which is this thing here, the hydrated iron oxide. Now rusting is a galvanic process, so it's a redox reaction style process. So electrons are conducted between the sites, between where these things form, through the metallic iron lattice, so through the actual metal. And the electrolyte may be a film of water on the surface. So the electrolyte can actually complete the circuit by joining it with um, electrically as an electrolyte. So any ions in the water film help to conduct the charge in a galvanic cell. So if you have a drop of pure water, it won't be as bad as a drop of salt water. Um, that's why, again, the value of your car, if you live near the ocean, is lower than the value of a car that's nowhere near the ocean. Because that salt water uh, really, does, um, really does accelerate this rusting and corrosion process. Now, the conditions for rusting. So we can promote rusting by the presence of electrolytes, having those electrolytes around. Little impurities in the steel can actually help to nucleate sites, so it can actually help rust to form. Um, if you stress a particular region, so like if you were to take a piece of iron, bend it into 90 degrees, there'd be a lot of stress at the corner. So if you stress certain regions, you can actually promote rust there. Um, if you have regions of differential aeration, so that sounds really impressive and really complicated, but all that means is uh, if you have one part that has no oxygen available to it and one part that has a lot of oxygen available to it, that can actually help to promote the rust. Um, of course, if you stick, say, you know, zinc to iron, you could actually um, cause rust to happen more readily. And, of course, if you put it near an acid, which is why we don't make cans out of steel, 
um, that can help promote Rust as well. So if we went to actually diagrammatically represent the rusting process, this is what it would look like. Um, it looks very complicated, but actually what happens is fairly linear. It just looks like there's lots of arrows going everywhere. So this white line here, this thick white line, is our iron or our steel that we're going to um, react. So what happens is the, the Fe metal oxidizes at areas where there's the least amount of oxygen available. Okay. Um, now that sounds sort of counterintuitive because doesn't oxygen stimulate this process? But remember that the electrons transfer throughout the metal, so it doesn't matter where they actually show up. So the Fe atom becomes the Fe ion, right? And the electrons that it produces in that process travel through the metal, okay? Now they travel to the area, just the surface of the bubble, where the oxygen content is very high because oxygen can diffuse into the water. And so the electrons that have come out of this iron atom react with the oxygen and water to give you those, all those OH minus ions that I mentioned in the previous slides. So here. Now all of these OH minus will be attracted to the Fe2 plus because they're oppositely charged. So they'll come together and form this solid um, iron hydroxide. Now that will continue to oxidize because the oxygen will continue to react with it and that will form rust. Okay. And so basically what happens is all of the reduction reactions happen at areas where there's very high oxygen content and the oxidation happens where there's very low oxygen content. Okay. So that is basically how the rusting mechanism works. Now, so that concludes today's lesson on the rusting mechanism of iron. We looked at what are the conditions that we require to have rust, what is the mechanism and the chemical reactions involved, and how does it actually look in, if we were to try and demonstrate it diagrammatically. So we'll move on to the question segment now, and we'll see if we can use all this information to answer some questions. So, a metal piece was made of two metals, copper and nickel, tightly joined together. Which metal would corrode more extensively? So the answer is nickel. Copper is far less reactive um, compared to nickel, so it won't corrode as fast as nickel. And in the future, we're going to look at cathodic protection, and this is essentially the basis of cathodic protection. So outline the optimum conditions for rusting of iron or steel, or any sort of iron alloy. We want it to be water to be available. We want there to be salt. And we also want oxygen rich environment. We want a lot of oxygen to be available as well. So those are the main conditions that we need to satisfy to get rust to occur. We need water. We hopefully want some ions. And we need definitely need oxygen rich um, atmosphere. Okay. So use this diagram as a model and explain the process of rusting and comment on any limitations of this model. Okay? So, so basically an electrochemical process occurs. Iron atoms are oxidized um, and release electrons. So there we have it. Iron comes out and it releases electrons. This area is called the anode. So anox red cat. Anode oxidation reduction cathode. So this reaction occurs at this anode. These electrons are transferred through the metal because metals are conductive. And then oxygen from the atmosphere takes up these electrons and is reduced. So we reduce oxygen in the atmosphere using these electrons. So we call that the cathode. So reduction happens at the cathode. And here's our reaction again. So the ferrous and hydroxide ions come together and form iron hydroxide, which is there, which is insoluble. And so this model only shows the formation of iron hydroxide. So the Fe2 plus is then oxidized further to form Fe3 plus, which forms the hydrated iron oxide, which makes up rust. Okay? So this doesn't fully show the entire model that we use to predict rusting. So 
A drop of water is placed on a clean sheet of steel. Where would you expect to observe rust formation? Inside the drop, around the drop, or well away from the drop? Okay, so your options are essentially here is your plate of metal, here's your drop of water. Do we expect to see the rust here on the edge of the drop, here in the center of the drop, or somewhere random like on the other, some other part of the piece of steel? Okay, so just think about it while I erase this, and we'll see if we can get the right answer. So, rusting occurs around the edge of the drop because that's where most of the oxygen is available. Um, so, with the electrons that are moving through the iron and away from the oxidation site, which is under the drop. So we see that we see the rust actually form at the edge because that's where all the oxygen is. And remembering that the oxidation happens at the center of the drop where there's no oxygen. So the electrons travel away and react with the oxygen and then the iron the Fe ions can mix with the hydroxide and form iron hydroxide, but they need to get more oxygen, so they go to the edges and get the oxygen to become rust. Okay, so that so it would form around the edge. So the rusting reaction is a complete set of re redox reactions. It's a complex set of redox reactions, not a complete set, it's a complex set. Describe the, re the anode reaction in rusting and include an equation. So iron metal is oxidized to iron two ions, or ferrous ions, um, and so they lose electrons. So there's our reaction. Okay. Describe the cathode reaction, so a similar question. Oxygen is reduced, gaining electrons, reacting with water to form hydroxide ions. Again, we've seen that reaction before. And then construct the overall equation leading to the formation of iron two hydroxide and outline any further oxidation that occurs. So if you combine the two equations, the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you'll get this. And that gives us our iron hydroxide. So the ferrous and hydroxide ions form iron 2 hydroxide, which gives us this. And then further oxidation of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus gives us the reduction of oxygen. And we finally get to our rust process here. Okay. So the overall formation of rust can then be written as this reaction. Okay. So if you go back through each equation and you write down um, all the terms on the left hand side, all the terms on the right hand side and cancel them all out, you'll actually see this just jump out at you. Okay. So that concludes today's lesson on rusting and the mechanism of rusting. And it concludes our series on alloys. So we looked at in this lesson, we looked at rust and how it forms. And in this series, we looked at alloys, steel, and how steel rusts. So hopefully you've learned something about steel and rusting, and I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.